morning and welcome to our service on this first Sunday after Christmas. Welcome to everybody who is watching at home too. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ, to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. We stay seated as we listen to a recording Ruth and Mike have made for us, the song, His Name is Wonderful. Come see the baby crib for a bed. His mother Mary lay down his sweet head. The starlight was shining, the wise man was loud. Come see the baby and worship him. His name is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel, Holy One, Son of God, Savior of the world. Come and adore. Someone like me, what could I offer? What could I bring? Come and adore him, King of Kings, his name is wonderful. Counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, everlasting Father. Savior of the world, and the greatness of His reign will never end. Let there be peace on earth and all good will to men. Come, let us worship him, wonderful counselor, mighty God, Prince of Peace, everlasting Father, Emmanuel, you're the Holy One, Son of God, Savior of the world. His name is wonderful. Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father, Emmanuel, you're the Holy One, Son of God, Savior of the world. Let us have a few moments of silence before we come to our time of confession. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. 
we are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all humankind. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. Give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be sincerely thankful, so that we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. Now we listen to the music group singing Jesus Child. <laughs>
Steve will now bring us our reading, and after that, Anand will preach to us. Reading is taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 to 21. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made, no, made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Jesus is named. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Good morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day bringing us back into your church. Father, speak to our hearts that we will hear and respond. In Jesus' name, amen. When a baby is born, it's always a joyous news. These days, we receive this news through an email or on WhatsApp or Twitter saying, just now we became proud parents, both mother and baby are doing fine. In those days, people would have shared the joyous news of the childbirth by word of mouth, one relative telling the other, and the news will spread. But in what we see here in our reading today is literally an out of the world announcement, an announcement like no other, which the shepherds heard. The father, who is the architect of the world, does the announcement in a grand scale for the birth of his son. Angels themselves carrying the news of the birth of this baby. This was not an announcement that was decided at the last minute. This birth was different. A birth that was conceived before the foundations of this world. A birth which was foretold by the prophets through the ages, a birth that was eagerly awaited by the people of Israel, a birth in which the child would be the way to heaven for anyone who would believe in him. Why is this baby so special? The Bible says the child grew up and increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Even at a very young age, the baby grew up to expound the scriptures to the rabbis of those times with the divine wisdom. He taught us a very different way to live in a world which praised the brave, decorated the powerful, and believed that might was right. He taught us that blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. When someone was running out of resources as a wedding to provide for the guest, he intervenes to replenish them. When his disciples were caught in a storm, and thought they were about to die, Jesus intervened 
to calm the storm. When he saw a widow has lost her only son and had lost all hopes, he intervened to raise him from the dead. He taught us that we are the salt and light of this world. And he was the only one to proclaim that I am the way, the truth, and the life. He went through the pain and anguish for your sake and my sake. In the Garden of Gethsemane, he pleaded with his father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. When the time came, he submitted himself to his father's plan so that you and I can have eternal life. On the cross, he made his victory cry. He said, it is finished. What was finished? The alienation of man from God due to sin is over. He has finished bearing the sins of the world on himself. He has finished fulfilling God's plan for redemption of you and me. And that is why this baby was special. At his birth, the father invited people from all backgrounds to be part of his birth. The wise men, they were learned, and they might have been rich too, to undertake such a long journey to find this baby. The invitation to the shepherds who were at the bottom of the societal pyramid in those days clearly depict that he always includes the lowly, the marginalized, and the forgotten in his plans. Another example of this is the town that he chose for the birth of Jesus. Bethlehem was the least honorable among the towns in Judah. The primary significance of Bethlehem was its very insignificance. It was a lowly town, so small, that it, not even men that it was not even mentioned in the list of 100 towns in the book of Joshua. Bethlehem was little, both in size and in significance in the eyes of the non-believing world. Micah calls Bethlehem a small among the clans of Judah, and it is here our Lord Jesus was born. In making Mary and Joseph and the innkeeper as part of his plan, we know that he was also concerned about those who were in the middle of the social pyramid. Like father, like son, Jesus always identifies himself among little ones. God chooses the little things of this world to shame the things that are great. God chooses the obscure, the insignificant, the lowly, the common, the unnoticed as the very instruments through which he displays the brightest flashes of his glory. Jesus told us a parable comparing the kingdom of God to, to an invitation to a wedding banquet. The king in the story sent his servants to those who have been invited to the banquet to tell them to come, but they refused to come. Then he sent some servants and said, tell those who have been invited that I've prepared my dinner. My oxen and fattened cattle have been butchered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they, no pay, but they paid no attention and went off, one to his field, another to his business. Then the king said to his servants, the wedding banquet is ready, but those I invited did not deserve to come. So go to the street corners and invite to the banquet anyone you find, so that the servants went out into the streets and gathered all people they could find, the bad as well as the good, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. Today, it is the same. The baby that was proclaimed by the angels as the savior, who is Christ, grew up to be the son of man and took my sin and yours upon the cross and extends the invitation to know him. The rich and the poor alike. He invites us to have him as our way and truth and life. 
He invites us to be branches attached to him who is the true vine. He invites us to carry our cross and to follow him no matter what. The shepherds and the magi responded to the invitation. How about you and me today? Are we busy not to be mindful of his invitation like those in the parable? Or we have accepted his invitation but not very sure of letting him lead our lives fully, saying some areas in my life are too personal where I and only I will make decisions. The last verse of our reading today says that the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Yes, exactly as it was told to them. The shepherds believed what they heard and saw from the angels and pursued to find out and they got to see exactly as it was told to them. This bears witness to the fact that our God keeps his word. Yes, in my life and in your life, he is a promise keeper. Probably currently in what is going on in your life, it is difficult for you to comprehend that. But your situation and mine does not change the fact that our God is a promise keeping God. In Isaiah chapter 45, uh, sorry, in Isaiah chapter 55, the Lord says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the shepherds did, we learn to trust his word. The way he leads may be different, but as we continue to hold on to him, surely we will see his ways making sense to us and to see how beautifully he has led us. We have come to the final Sunday of 2020. We did not expect a year so turbulent when this year started. We hope and pray 2021 will be a better year. Whatever is in store in the new year, be sure that it must pass through him to come to you. There is an invitation today to know him, to trust him, and to dwell under the shelter of the Most High. And the Bible promises that whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. The God whom you trust will be your refuge and your fortress. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by the day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will, lead, you, will, you will tread on the lion and the cobra, and you will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. 
I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. And I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and will show him my salvation. The invitation is there today to know him and to trust him and to dwell under the shadow of the Most High. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for this wonderful time this morning. Father, we take hold of Psalm 91 as your promise as we step on to 2021, Lord. Father, we pray that you will hide each one of us under your wings and you will lead us, Father. And let us be sure that anything that comes through us should pass through that fortress. Father, we pray and thank you. You are such a wonderful God. Father, help us to yield to your voice more and more every day in 2021. To keep hearing the still small voice and to obey and to heal, and to give, give ourselves up at the altar so that there will be more of you and less of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us spend a few moments reflecting on God's promises to us and also his invitation. Shall we stand to say the creed together? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us sit or kneel now as Barbara comes to lead our prayers. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you on the last Sunday of the year to give you praise and honor. This year has been particularly difficult with COVID-19, but you have carried us safely to almost the end. Lord, although it sometimes felt like we were alone, your word reminds us that it is in difficult times that you carry us. Although London and many other places have been placed in tier four to reduce the spread of the virus, we know you alone is the answer. We claim your promise 
in your word that if we believe in you and take your name on, that you will never leave us or forsake us. This virus has affected all of us differently throughout the year. There are people amongst us who have lost loved ones to the virus. Lord, comfort us. There are others who feel lonely and anxious. Lord, protect us. There are those who are uncertain and fearful about the future. Lord, give us hope. You are all-knowing, Lord, and we pray that you give divine wisdom to all in authority, in government, in organizations, businesses, hospitals, schools, and the church, so that the leaders will know how to proceed and will pull together to follow your guidance to reduce and stop the spread of this deadly virus. We pray that the new vaccines will be safe and successful in erad eradicating this virus and protect us from any future mutations. Lord, we pray that this virus ends with 2020. We pray that 2021 is completely different from this year. Lord, we pray for normal lives where we can meet and commune. Lord, let your Holy Spirit protect us in Jesus' name. We pray for those who have been bereaved this year and ask that you draw close to them, giving the comfort they need at this time. Lord, too many to mention, but you know them all by name. Lord, we raise them up in prayer. We think particularly of Gillian parents and her family as they mourn the loss of Michael just before Christmas. We also pray for those who are ill or frail and those who are recovering from sicknesses. We ask that you heal them and renew them in strength. May they be healed in your name and enter 2021 with renewed health and hope of a better year. Lord, we pray for the poor and homeless, especially in this time of strict social distancing. Lord, they could easily be forgotten or overlooked as people stay indoors. We pray that their needs are met through you and all the organizations and volunteers. Lord, keep them safe and give them hope. We pray for those who are finding the current situation difficult to cope with, such as those with mental health, depression. We also pray for those who are in abusive relationships, that it will cease and so to experience peace in their lives. Lord, help and protect us. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have lost their jobs and are, in, are finding it difficult to make ends meet. We place our economy into your hands, Lord, with all the many demands upon it. We pray for our country, the United Kingdom, as we have negotiated some sort of trade deal with the rest of Europe. May you guide our leaders to lead us forward. May the people of our beloved country pull together and rely on you to show us the way. May we not try by our own might. For you alone is God and all-knowing. So many things feel impossible at the moment. But Lord, you are sovereign and nothing is impossible with you. We ask for your protection in 2021. We ask for you to lead us in 2021. We surrender, Lord, totally to you. Break us, mend us, and make us new. We thank you for the people here today and many listening and watching online. Bless each and every one of us as we listen to your word. We thank you, Lord, that in all things 
you work for the good of those who love you. Help us to trust and look to you alone, Lord, in all aspects of our lives. For now and in the coming year, this we humbly ask through Jesus Christ, your only Son. Amen. We continue in prayer as we say the collect together. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ, grant that as he came to share in our humanity, so we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we listen to the song, Joy to the World. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> 